Hey guys, uh, I had to run to my car. Battery was, uh, my phone was going dead. Uh, I just left the courthouse. Um, I got to get some things taken care of, but I wanted to give you guys a quick little update. Um, uh, Anthony DeFew and Andrea Parker are going to do, uh, or they did a live feed during the lunch break. They shared some things that caught my attention. Um, I guess in the court, they were equating uh, BLM as law enforcement agents, and the, and the judge was allowing this thing, things to be said, um, yet they have no arresting authority. They cannot uh, arrest you. Um, they can tase you, they can shoot you, they can scare you, but they can't arrest you, but yet we still are allowing them to be labeled as law enforcement. Um, that's one thing that, that was on, that caught my attention. Um, another thing is the judge is acting way out of line on this one. The, the judge is is not just controlling or helping the defense she's offering case law uh she's offering case law which she's not supposed to do she's not an attorney she's def she's make sure that there's balance of law the prosecution prosecutes law the the attorneys for the defendants defend law they're not defending the person that's that's in shackles they're defending the rule of law the judge is supposed to be the mediator, the referee, to make sure things are being ran uh, correctly. Um, so th this, these are the type of things that are being allowed, and it's it's sad. It's really sad that we have guys in that are that are facing these charges, and that that um, we have a, a judge who's obviously has, has chosen sides. The sides she is on is on the prosecution. She wants to see some convictions. That's that's why they separated these guys into tiers, uh, because they know that it's like a roll of dice. You increase your odds, the more time you roll of, of getting something you want. Your your chances of, of being successful increase. Um, um, I, I heard, or they were talking about a gentleman named, uh, sorry, sorry, somebody was trying to call me. Uh, the gentleman was named, his name is Alex Ellis. He was narrating a video that was recorded by a gentleman named Michael Flynn. Um, Michael Flynn is deceased. He's 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 no longer with us, um, but yet his evidence is, is allowed into um, uh, into the courts. Alex Ellis is was with um, Michael Flynn. Uh, he was 17 years old. He was a bus boy. He was young at the time. Um, the, his credibility as, as a witness, uh, to my to my knowledge, has not been questioned. Uh, but still, they're allowing this in. Uh, they're trying to take our fellas down. They're trying to do their best uh, to take these guys down. Um, again, the way the judge has been acting, the way the prosecution has been acting, the, from from the time of uh, this whole incident started with the BLM, has been just out of order. And now here we are in courts, and it's still remaining out of order. Um, I did ask a couple of people that witnessed uh, that, that were in the courtroom, how did the jury appear? The, the jury is listening. The jury are writing down notes. They are, um, um, they don't seem as interested in the prosecution's case uh, as they are with the defendants, with, with, with the attorney's cases. You know, they, they, when the attorneys, when the defend, the, the, the defense gets up to, to um, make an argument or, or, or cross-examine, the jury seems to be interested. They're leaning forward. They're writing down notes. But when the prosecution gets up, the, the jury doesn't seem to be buying anything uh, that they're saying. So, um, with all that said, guys, I mean, with with what's going on with with um, with this judge, she's she's choosing sides. She's providing case law. Uh, she refuses to 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 call this a protest. She's calling it an assault. She does not want anyone using the word protest in this case. She wants to call it an assault. But yet there's evidence showing that it was just a protest. Uh, people, If people were armed, the, 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 the firearms were holstered, they were legally armed. Um, it, I mean, it, what I'm doing in front of the courthouse can be interpreted as a crime because if I'm open carrying and asking people to come and join us, that is a crime. They can convert a right into a crime. That's the type of, of stuff we are facing now. They don't honor the Constitution. They, they, they declared war on the Constitution and in turn declared war on us, me and you. The thing we have to remember that is if things like this, if we allow them to happen, 
causes corrosion in the Constitution. The Constitution begins to corrode. Um, if the more and more we sit back um, and we just go to these rallies and, and tell people to come, it's really not going to do anything. There's probably maybe maybe nine or ten people in the courtroom for us on our side. I can't go in there. You already know why. Um, they're not our friends. I talked to the DHS officers outside. You saw that. I was nice. I didn't. I, I didn't get argumentative with them. I asked them to please help. Help me. I know. I, I said I know you guys are on our side. You said you're helping us with with the fellas upstairs, and I appreciate that. I asked them please. Can you can you provide something to, to save time of life that's going to be taken from me? They said, well, I wasn't there. The, off the agent that said that he wasn't there, that he walked out, he was there. Um, but you know what? I'm not here to argue. I, I don't have Gavin style. I'm not Gavin. I don't have that, that type of, of luck to be arguing with them because every time I, I argue with an officer, I end up black and blue. I end up in handcuffs. Um, and the crowd around me will applaud with that. But going back to the judge, I'm sorry I digress, and then I, I, I want to try to keep it on the fellas as much as I can. But going back to the judge, her acting out of line should be reason for everyone to come down. Everyone to say, you know what, enough is enough, and we're going to gather in large numbers and show this, the, 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 this government that we're not going to take it anymore. We're going to speak up, we're going to call you out. How dare you call this protest an assault? when nobody was assaulted. One of the witnesses said maybe the BLM's uh, feelings were hurt, but that's the only thing, the only damage that was done. Prosecution didn't like that. But they, uh, they obviously got up to, to object. I'm, I'm glad we had a witness like that that got up and just spill it out and just put it out there. I love that. We need more people like that. We need to stop playing nice. You saw when you act nice, they still don't care. You act nice, they still treat you like a Gavin, Gavin Syme. If, if you go up and you act nice, they're just gonna say, yeah, we got your back, we got your back, and you turn around, they make fun of you. Because you know what, the Metro officers, when they were arresting me, they were making fun of everyone there. And you know what, the DHS agents too, they make fun of us, they laugh at us. Again, if that's a friend, who needs an enemy? But I love you guys. I'll try to keep you posted as much as I can. Um, I, I kind of feel like I am ca outcasted on that sidewalk, but that's okay. That is fine. I will continue to go and, and give the best updates that I can. I don't want to drag this on. Um, if you have any questions, get at me here. I'll answer them to the best of my, my ability. Uh, I love you guys. Remember why we do this. God, country, and family. And all of you are my family. I love every single one of you, and I will stand up for you. I don't care if I get beaten or taken to jail. I'll always speak up for you. Love you.